Hey, so in this video I'm going to go over my game Coulombic. It's a magnetism engine. So there's negative and positive particles and they're all pushing apart and pulling together and stuff. Um, this is an intermediate level video. It's not really like my usual beginner stuff. And I'll just show you a few more examples of kind of the magnets we're trying to make here. So we're going to start from scratch and we're going to make, make what you see here. So we're going to make a new project. Okay, so a new project, I'm going to first make a floor, make a big floor. I'm going to make um, a sphere. This, I guess, will be the negative charged one. I'm going to make another one. It'll be a positive charged one. And I'm going to make a cube, which will have a charge, but it won't move. So that's going to be like a test zone. I'm going to make an empty game object here, call it particles. And we're going to put this stuff into that. And finally, make the camera look at them from the top. Okay, so set up a little test zone. Now in assets, I'm not going to get crazy with, you know, folders. I'm just going to do what needs to be done. Uh, we're going to have three scripts, charged particle. So all three of these are going to have this script, except this one, moving charged particle, is going to inherit from charged particle. And we also are going to need particle manager. Okay, so open up charged particle to start. So really all this one's going to do is it's going to have a charge, which will start at one. And we're going to uh, change the color. This might seem trivial, but you really do need to have red or green depending on positive or not. So we're going to make a color and it's going to be, we're going to say is charge that, then make it color dot green. Otherwise make it color dot red. Okay, and then just get component renderer dot, dot material dot color equals color. And actually that's all we need for charged particle. So open up moving charged particle. Oh wait, one more thing. Void start update color. Cool. So now moving charged particle, instead of inheriting from mono behavior, it's going to inherit from charged particle. So it's also mono behavior. So it's going to have this other stuff, but it's just going to be in addition to that. So we're going to have a mass, which will start at one. We're going to keep track of a rigid body that we are going to make and we're going to start. What we're going to do when we start, we're going to update color just like before, but if it's also moving, we've got to add a rigid body to ourselves. Then we're going to set the mass to our mass and we're going to set, and this is a little basic here. This is just setting the stuff up. It's a particle manager that's really going to get some coroutines and some more complicated stuff in it. Uh, what we can do though for now, just to set up the scene a little more, particles, you can add that, ooh, particles, we can add the particle manager. Sphere one and sphere two, we're going to add the moving charged particles. And the cube, we're going to add just charged particle. Uh, the cube is going to be charge three and the one of the spheres is going to be charge negative one. So that's good. Back to the code now to particle manager. So you need to know some basic physics here actually to make this work. So I'll make them squares. So let's say we have this going on. And the squares can't move, but the circle can. So if we're trying to figure out where this one's going to go, this interaction is going to actually push it this way a little bit. This interaction here is going to push it this way a little bit. And this interaction is actually going to pull it 
that way. And you're going to add up those vectors and we're going to get something, I suppose that would be like that. So overall this thing is going to be pushed just a little bit in that yellow direction. And in our code we're going to need to do this frequently, you know, several times a second, a hundred times a second. Because if it's too brief, you know, you're going to see things moving around kind of like jerky and they're going to freak out. So it needs to be smooth, but that's the idea in Particle Manager. So we need to make a private float called Cycle Interval. And we're going to do this uh, 100 times a second. So 0 0.01, that should be good. I'm also going to keep track of, oh, list, list. So up here we need to using systems collections dot generic. Now we can use the generic list and we're going to make a list of charged particles, call them charged particles. I'll explain why we're doing this briefly. So only once when we start, we're going to find all the charged particles. I'm going to make it into a list of charged particles. And it's going to be find objects of type charged particles. Whoops. Charged particle. Okay. So we don't want to do find objects of type a hundred times a second for every charged particle. I'm, this is a slower process. We want to just hold on to it. And we're going to do the same with moving as well. Okay, so now just like in the picture, we need a function for this guy. So we want to give the function this guy and it's going to calculate the three arrows and then apply this magnetic force to that particle. So we're going to call this private void apply magnetic force and we're going to give it a moving charged particle. So just the one. So when I give this just the one, it's going to find every, it's going to, we're going to give it the circle and it's going to find every charged particle and then add up all the forces and then apply it. So we're going to start with the new force is going to start at zero. And so here we're going to not just go through all moving charged particles, but actually all charged particles in charged particles. Because in the picture again, you know, just because these squares aren't moving doesn't, we have to apply everything, you know, if I have another, ooh, if I have another one here, you know, and I'm still trying to calculate this circle up here, I need to go through everything with a charge. It doesn't matter if it's moving or not got to look at everything. So we've got this moving charged particle. It's going to look at all the charged particles. What's it going to do? Well, if it's the same, and you can do this with inheritance, um, if the thing were, you know, if I'm looking at this red, this red thing, because this is a charged particle as well, if we got the same one, well then then just continue in the for loop. Like, don't do anything. But now we need to do all right, the distance between the two. So we're going to take the distance between this guy and this guy. We also need a force. And I found a thousand is just a good magic number here. Otherwise, it'll move too slow, move too fast, but this is, this is about right for the scale we're talking about. So in physics, the force between two charged particles is charge times charge divided by distance squared. So we're going to do the same thing here. This is uh, Coulomb's law, which is why I called the other thing Coulombic. Okay, so that's the force proportionally the force. This is not in newtons or whatever. It's just a funny number. But now we need the direction as well. 
this one's going to be this position minus the other thing's position. We need to normalize it to make it length one. Normalize. Yes. You know, because if they're far apart, I don't care if it's length 20 or length one, I want it to always be the same length one, just the right direction. I don't want it to be a long vector. And now we can figure this out. So new force is going to keep track of all of these. So as we're adding them up, these black arrows, right now we only have one black arrow. We want to, and the yellow arrow is our new force. Right now it's zero, but each time we're going to add to it. We're going to add our force times our direction and then actually the cycle interval. So if it's a short interval, it'll be a weaker force. If it's a fast interval, like the number up here, if it's 0.1, then it's larger. So it's going to be force is greater because we're doing it less often. But it, this really is just force times direction. That's all that is. So uh, one last thing that's a little funny is I found if you have two things that end up right on top of each other, then you're going to get a problem with this. And this handles that. So if the new force is a funky divide by zero error, then it just puts it back at zero. That handles that, that fringe case, but it's not nice to see crashes when Maybe you put two spheres on top of each other. Okay, so now we're just going to use the rigid body and add that force. And that's all there is to it. Now, whenever we want, we can apply a magnetic force. But when are we going to do that? And this is where coroutines come in. We're going to make a new I numerator method, function, whatever. Whatever C sharp calls it. I'm just going to call it cycle because it's going to happen kind of like a cycle, it's never going to stop. So for each moving charged particle, it's going to have its own cycle. So every, you know, 100 times a second, cycle is going to happen, and it's going to apply the magnetic force. And this is something that I uh, coroutines are great for. So while true, so it's really going to go forever apply magnetic force on myself. But now we're going to yield return a new wait for seconds. S interval. What was it called? I can't seem to remember. Cycle interval? What did I call it? Hmm, it's not coming up. Okay, so now when cycles called, well, I'll write the rest up here and then I'll explain it. Okay, so start coroutine the cycle with that. Oh, we don't need that. Okay, so the way this works, normally when you run a method, say this is going to start, you know, it does this, this happens, comes down here. Normally you'd expect this to happen, so the first one you would expect this would have to finish. You know, it would come down to here, and it would get stuck, and it would hang here, and so this would take, you know, way too long. But actually when you start a coroutine, this is going to be very instant, very fast. So even if I have a thousand moving charge particles, this is going to happen just in an instant in code time, basically. And then these are going to kind of just, we've started our own kind of brain for each moving charged particle. And each one is going to have this loop. And it's going to almost pretty close to cycle interval. It's not actually going to wait exactly that amount of time, but it's really close. That's how coroutines work. And it's going to update this. So if I save this, uh, We'll see if it works. I want to add something though. Let's see what happens when I play. Yep, cool. 
That is what we expected. That's repelled and that is sucked in. So that is cool. I'm going to add one thing here though. Because if we have, say, a hundred of these things, the problem is they're all going to start at the same time and they're all going to wait. So every, exactly every hundredth of a second, we're going to get this spike in processing. It's not really the best. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one little extra thing. If is first, is first is false, and then yields return new wait for seconds and then random uh, cycle interval so when it's just the first go i'm going to wait a random number between 0 and 0 0.01 so that all of these magnetic forces are going to be kind of spread out evenly so that there won't be any spikes Oh, what did I do? Oh, zero to that. There you go. I have a little typo. I'm actually going to add a quick script here that you don't need. It's just clone generator. I find it handy. So if I click on this guy and I add clone generator, it'll just make a bunch more. You can see the, the green dots. That's where it's going to make them. So if I make a bunch of these, maybe in this direction, and I make a bunch of these, it just, you know, it'll be much more impressive looking, I suppose. Okay, and then have another look at the camera. Center it a bit, press play and see what we got. Cool. They're a little bit crazy though. Maybe spread it out just a bit. Yeah, because they're the same charge is so close that they immediately just blast apart. Ah, well, anyway. So that's the basic magnetism engine. And if you guys want to have more details, uh, there's the Coulombic game is open source. It's on my GitHub page because there's a lot more to my region manager, particle manager in that game. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, tell me what you think.